The angel of death for me came In Kufa he calls out my name And if he returns my soul to my creator I'm scared he'll then search for Hussein In Karbala In Kufa he calls out my name The angel of death for me came In Kufa he calls out my name And if he returns my soul to my creator I'm scared he'll then search for Hussein In Karbala In Kufa he calls out my name In Kufa he calls out my name I am Muslim and I have a pledge with Hussein to gather support and topple a tyrant's reign. They wrote to us of this tyranny, they'd complain. Forbidden on us to from request abstain We are the house that grabs the hand Of any who struggle to stand Tell the angel of death I have a duty here I'm scared he'll then search for Hussein in Karbala in Kufa he calls out my name In Kufa he calls out my name O oh, angel of death when for any soul you call They answer you at your feet even tyrants fall Whereas I'm left with no assistance left me all And as upon my head calamities befall Seventy-one are with Hussein with me not even one remains Seventy-one are with Hussein With me not even one remains If the angel of death knows I've no supporter I'm scared he'll then search for Hussein In Karbala In Kufa he calls out my name in Kufa calls out my name, I walk alone I walk alone, no support From street to street, the angel of death calls out Muslim, your death greet. I feel the clutch of failure upon my heart beat because of me. Will Hussein face such defeat? Because of me, will Hussein face a harsh defeat? O oh, angel of death, let me stay. O oh, angel of death, let me stay. For more support, I swear I'll pray. For this angel takes me to the hereafter. For if this angel takes me to the hereafter I'm scared he'll then search for Hussein 
in Karbala in Kofay calls out my name in Kofay calls out my name it may be so that's with martyrdom I'm fated but my reply my master Hussein's awaited it may be so that's with martyrdom I'm fated but my reply my master Hussein's awaited by this picture of Hussein killed I am haunted by this picture of Hussein killed I am haunted and so by you Coming out of death, I am taunted And so by you Coming out of death, I am taunted To Hussein I have a duty This shapes my content as mighty If I accept death, my fortitude shall wonder I'm scared that he'll search for Hussein in Karbala in Kufa calls out my name in Kufa calls out my name they tell me drink they tell me drink before we throw you to the ground Each time I sipped in this cup My own blood I found I gaze to the land of death To which Hussein's bound I gaze to the Land of which Hussein is bound Oh Hussein, the world has your cousin abandoned Oh Hussein, the world has your cousin abandoned only the angel of death knows Only the angel of death knows What hardship throughout my blood flows Only the angel of death knows What hardship throughout my blood flows No, it's not because death or martyrdom I fear No, it's not because death or martyrdom I fear I'm scared he'll then search for Hussein in Karbala and Kofay calls out my name in Kofay he calls out my name Many hey, thanks to the poet Nouri Sardar أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أعظم الله وأجرنا وأجوركم من مصامنا أبي عبد الله الحسين Our dearest viewers, our condolences to you and of course to our awaited Savior May Allah hasten his reappearance As we mourn the days of the martyrdom of the grandson of the Holy Prophet And as we've just heard, we also tonight commemorate that loyal cousin that loyal family member, the one who died alone, who was tortured alone and started, if you like, the tragic events of Karbala or the tragic events of Karbala and the lead up to those events in the day of Ashura started with him, Muslim Ibn Aqil in the land of Kufa, who we regularly visit when we get the opportunity to go to 
Masjid al Kufa, a man who we revere and aspire to be like who, despite not being physically with his Imam at that time, no doubt spiritually he was connected. And of course, we know that Imam al Hussein salam, received the news of his death at the moment of those last moments where he passed his final breaths. Mala Ali, thank you so much. And just that chorus, if you could, uh, the wording of it about worried about. Uh, the angel of death going to absolutely incredible. Yeah. It, what was the exact wording? Sorry, um, the angel of death for me came mm -hmm. in Kufa. He calls out my name, Ahsent. and if he returns my soul to my creator, I'm scared he'll then search for Hussein mm -hmm. in Karbala. In Kufa, he calls out my name. What I found really fascinating about this poem, by the way, and salam alaikum, dear viewers, is essentially any time. The line, I'm scared he'll then search for Hussein in Karbala, which is repeated in every verse. Yep. The line before that is quite telling because everything about him is that if he was to fail his mission, mm -hmm. then the angel of death will say, look, I'm done with Muslim. I'm going to straight, straight to Hussein. So for example, so you hold the, on for as long as you exactly. can. Exactly. So, so for example, the last one, it, no, it's not because death or martyrdom I fear. I fear Hussein, yeah. you know, I fear that the angel of death is going to search for Hussein in Karbala. For example, if I accept death, no, no, I don't, uh, this one, where is it? Yeah, for if this angel takes me to the hereafter, I'm scared he's going to search for Hussein in Karbala. So everything yeah. around, about that poem was, was quite unique, actually, in a, in a special way um, that Muslim is commemorated. Absolutely. Um, it's, so, and I, I think it's a, it's a connection we could only, I say wishful, we can attain it if we so wish, you know, potentially. Yeah. But it's a connection with the Imam that I think we'd all just yearn for, Alhamdulillah. you know, and uh, putting yourself and everything you have. And we said it yesterday with Umm al but I think especially, I don't know, there's something very illustrative about that moment where the narration say that he's taken up to the top of the, not palace, but, you know, the wherever that you want to call it, of the, of the area where they resided mm. and was almost teased with in a way at those last moments, mm. you know, and I think that conviction to remain strong in it. I'm sure it must have felt quite lonely and it alludes into there as well that the companions are over there with Imam Hussein and he's yeah. alone at that point. I yeah, think yeah, that's absolutely. quite traumatic think, as well when you have I, to face that alone. Also kind of following on that point, I think Muslim Ibn Aqil is sometimes in a way underrated. 100%. Um, 100%. Unfortunately underrated because let's not forget, and we'll delve into this quite later on, but let's not forget Imam al Hussein's most trusted companion. Mm. For example, the Prophet would only send Imam Ali, when he knew that there was an important mission to be done. Very interesting. And point. so, so similarly, Imam Hussein, who the whole message of Imam Hussein, everything that he was fighting mm -hmm. for, everything that he was striving for, was in the hands of, of Muslim. He sends him, yeah. And he sends his most trust. Because going, going to Kufa, people may have questions they need to ask. Mm. He may need to convince some people. For example, he went straight there and, and, and the most prominent companions like Hani mm -hmm. and, and, um, and Mukhtar, uh, and uh, I believe Malik as well. Some of the most prominent, prominent um, uh, companions who were living in Kufa, they were immediately um, receiving mm. uh, of, of Muslim. But then certain situations happened politically. We'll talk about that yeah. later. But the most trust, in, and furthermore, he was a scholar. He Absolutely. was a, a full-on religious, a pious scholar. Yani. Absolutely. So the most trusted uh, advisor to, or not even advisor, ambassador, an ambassador for the message of Hussein. Yeah. Number one, what, what honor? Do you have Imagine. in terms of having the Imagine. message, all of that message of Abu Abdullah Hussein in your hands? And number two, the most trusted companion for Imam Hussein. Status, Hussain. it's a status, yeah, it's isn't it? It is amazing. Incredible. But inshallah, you'll be, um, as always, continuing. To continuing. Inshallah. The, yes, uh, yes, yes. Ashura. And I actually, to your question yesterday, I won't go through it, but I actually spoke to Sheikh Al Fan okay. today about your question that you mentioned yesterday about why doesn't Witr Motor have its own kind of as salam, etc. If it's if it's deemed to be unique, if it's right? deemed to be so unique, so yeah. I won't go into the answer is quite quite lengthy, but oh, as wow, you can okay. imagine, so we'll, we'll okay. go through that one uh, off air. But and Alhamdulillah, and, you know, I, I conveyed our thanks, I'm sure, on behalf of the viewers as well to him for for compiling this. Fantastic. Um, and you know, yeah, what a man, what a man. So we we continue when we go to as salam wa alaikum wa ala al arwah allati halat bifinaik, and this is where. I don't know, I think it's a part that we all start to resonate because sometimes the translation gets a bit easier for us to get to tune with or it goes a little bit more, ah, oh, yeah, okay, the souls, you know, I'm starting to feel something now. So we'll start with the first one. Assalamu alaikum wa ala arwah. So we'll stop at arwah. Now, it actually just says spirits here. There's no uh, kind of explicit mention as to what these spirits stand for, right? And I think we would... Uh, immediately probably say, okay, there's probably the spirits of those around him, i.e. 
the companions mm -hmm. that died with him. That would probably be like the first thing that we come to. And if we just take that for a moment, we're not just here obviously declaring therefore a salam upon Imam Hussein alayhi salam. We are encompassing the companions, which I think is a very uh, clear observation for us to appreciate. However, we do just assume it's the arwah are the souls of the companions. And some of us sitting come forward and say this could be a different definition of this arwah actually. And that is that it could be referring to the angels that are actually around the grave of Aba Abdullah mm. al-Hussein. And of course we have the many a hadith, but this specific one from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam where he alludes to these angels saying, visit al Hussein alayhi salam even if it's once a year for whosoever comes to him with knowledge of his station. And just on an aside, this knowledge of his station we see in a lot of the ziyarah that you should go عارفون بحقهم mm. that you should go knowing their rank which is a huge huge statement in any case but we come back visit al Hussein alayhi salam even if it's for one year for, for whosoever comes to him with knowledge of his station and not a non-believer would not be given other than paradise and he would be bestowed with extensive sustenance and Allah would quickly relieve for him from his problems indeed Allah entrusted 4,000 angels on the grave of al Hussein alayhi salam, all of whom weep for him. They accompany the visitor until he returns to his family and if the visitor gets sick, they visit him and if he dies, they witness and bear and seek for his and beg and seek for his forgiveness and mercy. So therefore we can also understand this arwah to be number one, the companions or also the angels is another version that the Mufassirin come forward. And we mention in one of the ziyara, Assalamu alaykum ya malaikati rabbil muqeemeen fi hadha al-haram. Peace be upon yeah. you, angels of my Lord, who inhabit this sanctuary. Um, go on. Just as a, as, a, as a side note, isn't there, not, not in Ziyat Ashura, but Ziyat Imam al Hussein mm -hmm. for his shrine, mm -hmm. doesn't, isn't there a mention specifically about the angels uh, who are... For the angels specifically. Yeah, yes. Al-Muhtaqeen, al, al I think. Uh, they, yes, so this is the bit, this is the bit just here. So, yeah. Assalamu alaikum ya malaikati rabbil muqeemeen. Exactly right, this. Right, right, right. Fi hadha al-haram. And the Mufassirin say that maybe to confirm that it could just be the companions and not the angels is the fact that here, because it's explicitly cited right. and we descriptively describe the angels, maybe in Ziyarat al-Ashura, therefore, it is only the companions. However, mm -hmm. there is no issue, they conclude by saying, there is no issue in saying Maybe you can address That's the right. angels and the companions. But but doesn't the remainder of that sentence, mm -hmm. Halat Bifinaik, doesn't okay. that then explain? Sorry, am I... Am so, I no, 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 you're oh. not joking. It's, oh. it's interesting because now the next bit now comes to this. I thought this could now be the angels, but actually this Halat Bifinaik. So again, just, just to go into a bit of the translation first for the viewers. So it's about Halat being the past tense kind of um, almost like coming from a... Nezala, like revealed, if you like, or okay. coming down, right? They came down or they descended. And the fina within Bifinaik is relating to this space, if you like, within the courtyard of either side of the courtyard of Aba Abdullah. Okay. So at this point, they're saying now it's the spiritual status of the companions in the next life that they're residing within the courtyard of the Okay, just, just a quick note on this mm -hmm. because a lot of people, um, the misconception, I guess, is that Halat Bifinaik is be fanatic, I think, where the annihilation. Okay, interesting. So annihilation, so so peace be upon the souls who have more or less given Been themselves yeah, yeah. or annihilated themselves mm -hmm. um, for you, Hussein. And I'm thinking, uh, I'm, I'm thinking back to Abdullah Abbas when he says, oh soul, ya nafs min ba'd al No, that's Huni, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. okay, 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 yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, so in terms of that, is so there's a difference between fina yeah. and then fina, fina as well. Yes. Okay. Cool, cool. So it's and I think it's it's quite nice because it's again an obvious reflection that we just mentioned, which is that status of the companions to be seen in not just the physical accompanying of the Imam. And of course, in order to do that, you need to have a spiritual status mm. as well, but a confirmation that they're residing in this courtyard with Aba Abdullah Al Hussein. Okay. And that's our part to remember them. Yeah. Um so that's that bit. Then we go to uh, again, another part I think a lot of us resonate with. Alaykum minni jami'an, salam Allah, abadan ma baqeet wa baqiya laylu wa nahar. And we, we start with the first half. So, alaykum minni jami'an, salam Allah. And the question comes in the entire ziyarah, we've said, as salamu alaykum, as salamu alaykum, as salamu alaykum. Why is it the other way around, yeah. right? 
And in Surah Al-Fatiha, we see a similar linguistic approach when we say, Iyaka na'bud. So we define who we're speaking to first, followed by what we've got to do with them. So what's the difference here? The difference is if I say, uh, look after my pen, please, Ali. It's a bit different if I say, Ali, look after my pen. The latter, it's like, okay, what's the weight of this pen? Mm. So similarly, when I say, Iyaka na'bud, only to you, I've now defined only to you, Allah, you cannot add anything else to this sentence now because I've defined or in terms of who I'm addressing, it's only iyak to you only na'bud that we worship. So similarly here, I'm saying alaykum to you and no one else. I finished who I've directed it to. Minni salam Allah from me salam off. And now it's another interesting point in the entire ziyarah at the beginning. We say salamu alaik, salamu alaik, salamu alaik. And we now mean. when we're doing all of them, we do the salam off Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the peace and blessings and all encompassing tranquility. And even more subtly, the, uh, the preposition of ala is one that is all encompassing mm. as well. So I'm now saying all of this uh, salam and peace from Allah and blessings and all of that that comes within that manifestation be all encompassed upon you specifically okay. as a group, collectively, Imam al Hussein and your companions. And that takes it to, uh, again, another jump. That's amazing. Which I think, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's something special. And just to conclude on this um, as a final bit, which is then, So we've now realized that this is a salam that is of so, such significance, if you like, of such loftiness. And we now qualify it or define its length by saying, forever, as long as I live and the night and the day, subsists hmm. and within this and i think just a point on the previous one we recognize that the grammar here is that it's a jumla ismiya it is um how can i call it it's uh it's a nominal sentence meaning that it's f continuous right in arabic it's a continuous forever never-ending salam that i'm bestowing and we then go on to the next line as i said at this point we're now saying that specific salam that is continuous, for me to be able to state this and for it to be forevermore from me, I'm declaring that I'm in a state of myself of such conviction that from now until my very end, I will not waver from this conviction in you. That's amazing. And that's that's, that's way that really too, is eye That's a statement, to you, yeah. you know, and that's, yeah. I don't know, maybe that's a statement we'll be held accountable for later on to say, look, you, you quickly just Dropped it in. Do you know what? No wonder it's a, it's um, Ziyat Ashura, for example, the the many miracles that people have seen Absolutely. because of Ziyat Ashura. For example, reciting Ziyat Ashura 40 days or 40 nights in a row in your mm -hmm. Hajj is, but actually, there's this is giving that a bit of a bit of weight and there's to okay, there's a reason behind that. Yeah. Ashura is not is not to be taken lightly. And I want and just doing double here, like so, just reflecting out loud on my own personal opinion here. I wonder whether. And we know that notion of 40 is to create a habit. Mm -hmm. And I wonder whether it's just a reminder that after 40 days, we find that, cha I find five days challenging, let alone 40, right? Maybe it's that constant reminder to say, wow, 40 times I've given this conviction. I need mm. to now live by it. You know, I really need to swear by it. Absolutely. Um, but inshallah, we'll, we'll continue. But that's, that's, that's where amazing. we end up on this bit. That's um, brilliant. That is brilliant. Well done. See, a man who didn't quiver, even at the last moment, yeah. Muslim. Um, yeah. So inshallah, we'll now... Head to our dear guest reciter, Brother Nori Sardar, who will grace us with a few lines about the tragedy. Allah billah min shaitan rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. On Muslim al Aqil alayhi salam and his depart and his martyrdom, say in Hussein's eye a tear as he says, Farewell, my messenger. From Mecca to Kufa, it ends in Karbala. Hussein cries out, O oh my cousin, what game has Kufa played? O oh, writers of Kufa, upon my household's blood you weighed. In my eyes, if he is preyed on, then on me you have prayed. And if he sways from his horse, it's as if the whole world has swayed. His Lord, his only companion, and after he had prayed, he turns his head to see behind him no helper and no aid. 
He calls out for Hussein while Hussein's tears of blood rain and written in his future, it ends in Karbala. Alone in the city, and if he finishes his prayer, the only support left for him sleeps in his eye a tear. Even if he turns his head and all helpers disappear, Kufa's mosque and sky and desert all cry out, O oh Muslim, we are here. And yet his hope flickers when only silence reaches his ear. No friends, no family, only enemies appear. He reads Falak and Nas. He reads Falak and Nas as his sword cries out, Ya Abbas. And he begins the war. He rises, refusing to be a part of his own tragedy. And within him ignites the blood of Khaybar's family. His allegiance and his zeal is a thing of beauty. He draws his sword and he begins the battle with Ya Ali. An army of angels behind him. Tell me who is lonely? One man fed better from the cradle against an army written upon his palm Ali is my first Imam and I am his defender Muslim battles alone and yet the hundreds he endangers if ever he tires then Hussein alone he pictures oh Beni Omeya he cries oh Beni Omeya I'm of Beni Hashim soldiers the son of Abu Talib to no tyrant surrenders is this all that you have brought me bring me greater numbers and the heads of disbelief the sword of faith dismembers Muslim is written upon his sword and Shia upon the blood poured in Kufa lives better. They take Muslim to Ibn Ziyad and he's wrapped in chains. Oh Muslim, where are your supporters? Not a soul remains. Know that our tyranny shall hold Iraq's neck by its reins. And once we have taken your life, we will go for Hussein's. If from giving allegiance to us your cousin refrains, will add his children's lives and his woman captives to his pains. To Hussein, say goodbye. In tears of blood you cry. His cries the skies will hear as it ends in Karbala. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. It's, oh, it's powerful, powerful. And again, it's, it's that unquivering conviction that I think, I, I don't know, the, the, more, the more you learn about it, the more you hear about it, and the more you get reminded of it, the more you just become in awe, I think, yeah, fundamentally. Absolutely. absolutely. And, and I th as, as, you know, from, from a historical perspective, um, in terms of Muslim ibn Aqil and his journey to, to Kufa, you know, he was, he was tasked with essentially just giving a, a field report just to see what the situation is, because there, there was many different calls from Kufa. Mm -hmm. to Imam al Hussein to say, look, tyranny is, is, is reigning here and, 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 and corruption and we, need, we know we need the Ahl al-Bayt. We need Imam al Hussein to come to Kufa. And so he was answering that call. Mm -hmm. essentially. So he sent Muslim just to, see, just to see what the situation is. And so when Muslim goes, initially he was doing well mm -hmm. because he was, um, as I mentioned, he was answering questions about, about Islam from a, from a religious perspective, from a fiqh perspective, being the scholar. Also, you know, gaining support from prominent, this is important as well, prom prominent tribal leaders. Okay. And it's important later on because these tribal leaders, obviously, the head of the tribe, if the head of the tribe says something, the rest of the tribe it goes. goes. Yeah. Um, so tribal leaders, he, he was, you know, uh, creating alliances and, and telling them, that not, not just alliances, but there's a truth that mm -hmm. needs to come. And, the, and that, is, that truth is from Mah Hussein So. A number of things. So he was doing well. He managed to pick up 12,000 or so um, uh, signatures. Essentially, the, the report that came to Imam al-Hussein is things are, things are okay. If you come, we do have the support. Let's, you, know, we, you can come. So he's given the green light. So Imam al-Hussein starts his journey. Now, when he does start his journey, there was, a, there was a political change that happened, which essentially turned things upside down. Mm -hmm. um, the governor of Kufa at the time, was, if I'm not mistaken, a man called Nafi'a, okay. right? Um, he was quite essentially not, didn't have Kufa with an ironclad. Um, and so was seen to be weak mm -hmm. by Banu Umayyah, specifically Yazid. So Yazid replaced this man with the person that we know as Abaydullah mm -hmm. ibn Ziyad, mm -hmm. who was relentless, mm -hmm. 
who was absolutely relentless. He, the tactics changed immediately because he killed approximately 10,000 people who supported Imam Hussein. Wow. First and foremost. Wow. Second, he threatened people. And these people, are, these people were poverty-stricken, religious in a way, people. So they didn't, they didn't really want to get involved in the politics because once there was, they weren't true, see this is the question as well, they weren't true Shia mm -hmm. of the prophets and Imam Ali and Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein. They weren't true Shia in the sense that the the ta'a for the imams is wajib. Yeah, yeah. Not in that sense. Shia is, is look, if it if it's if it benefits me, I'll follow. Yeah. If it doesn't benefit me, then then I'll go somewhere else. I just I just want to live my life in peace. Mm -hmm. And they weren't really involved in the politics because they didn't have a religious motivation. Mm -hmm. Muslim and the companions had a religious because it's their obligation to carry out the orders of Imam sure, Hussein sure. So the Shias, they, they saw themselves, or the people in the time in Kufa, they thought, look, um, if I'm going to follow Hussein, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die. I'm just going to stay in my house, close the door, and whatever happens, happens. Other than that, people were paid off. Certain other tribal leaders, companions, they were paid off, for example. And certain tribal leaders who were devout, religious, in terms of the the ta'a, the 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 uh, following the orders of Imam Hussein was wajib. People mm -hmm. like Hani, people like Mukhtar, for example. I think Hani was actually killed, mm -hmm. or Hajj ibn Adi was killed. Oh, yeah. I think, um, and so, and so these prominent leaders who were also tribal leaders, the tribal leaders were put in prison. And so, if the tribal leader was put in prison, as I mentioned earlier, the rest, the rest of the tribe doesn't yeah, follow. It just crumbles a bit. It yeah. just crumbles. And so, there's a number of things that happen until, um, unfortunately, you know, Muslim Aqil was was praying um, his Maghrib Salah in the Masjid. Once he finishes first salah from about seven or eight hundred people down to about thirty or forty, and, and just on that just subtle point, it does make me worry. Mm. Under such a test, would I buckle? Yeah, if you want to bring it to this day and age, it is is the biggest test. Do we actually consider ourselves the Imam for it? And look, and the most obvious thing that we can say is that the Imam of their time they didn't come out and support him mm -hmm. because of other things. The Imam of our time is here. The Imam of our time is here and he's, ta and he's saying, I need your help. Like, this is the time. And are we shutting the Answer the call. Yeah. Like, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. the time. Answer the call. Like, exactly the way Imam Hussein was saying, answer mm. the call. Imam Mehdi is saying, look, answer the call. And are we answering? Well, that's a different issue. Mm. But essentially, as I mentioned, so three or four, and until the last Salah, and he had three or four people behind him. Allah. And then it reached to the point where he left the masjid and there was no one with. Muslim Ibn Aqil. Mm. And that's where the calamities of Muslim Ibn Aqil would start in the sense that he would walk from city, or he would walk from uh, he would walk from alley to alley, from street to street, um, until he was exhausted. Um, he was exhausted and he was tired and uh, he didn't know uh, where to go, essentially. And this guy is a this man is a stranger in a strange land. Yes, he had friends and acquaintances, but he was a stranger in a strange land. And this man is Muslim Ibn Aqil, upon which the Prophet would praise Aqil, Imam Ali would praise Aqil, and this son of, uh, of, of Aqil um, was alone in a strange land. So he walked from city, uh, he walked from Ali to Ali, street to street, until he was exhausted. And then he fell, or he, he sat by a, a door. Now the door he sat by, the woman, an old lady who, who lived in the house, she came to the door and she saw a man sitting in front of her door now it wasn't it doesn't it doesn't look good on her if a man is sitting at her door she says oh man can you please move from 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 here Do you, you know what is it that that you need what is it that you want please move uh, and so she goes back into the house and then after a while she comes back and she sees the man is still sitting there she says listen oh man like i i, I want you to move from 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 my doorstep please can you leave so he tells her look can you just at least give me a cup of water i'm thirsty she says, okay, no problem. She goes back in, gets the cup of water and gives it to Muslim. He drinks the water. And then she says, look, you've, you've, you've drunk the water. I've given you what you needed. Please, can you go? And that's when he says, oh, Amata, oh, lady, I have nowhere to go. I have nowhere to turn to. Mm -hmm. She says, who are you? And he says, I am Muslim Ibn Aqil. And she says, you are Muslim? You are the cousin of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. You are part of the Ahl al Bayt and you have nowhere to go in my city, in our city of Kufa. No, 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 I can't have this. Please come inside. So she takes him inside. When she takes him inside, she gives him a place to stay, to rest, to let him pray, to feed him. She gave him water, she made him. And he didn't sleep the whole night, Muslim. 
didn't sleep the whole night. Unfortunately for her, she had a son who was with Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. He came into the house. When he came into the house, he heard noises in another room. He said, mother, is there someone in this room? She said, at first she said, no, 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 there isn't. But he said, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that there is someone in the room. Can you tell me who it is? And then she said, look, by Allah, if you promise by Allah that you won't tell anyone, I can tell you. And of course, yes, he says, I, I promise all of the oaths, everything you want, just tell me who it is. And she tells him it's Muslim ibn Aqil. And he says, oh, Muslim is in my house. Muslim is in my house. And so he sells his akhirah mm. for the dunya, hoping that the, the tyrant of the time, Ubaidullah, would give him a gift. And so he tells Ubaidullah that Muslim is in the house. Now Muslim, as I mentioned, spends the whole night praying, um, similar to Imam al-Hussein before the day of Ashura, they spent the whole night praying as well. And so the morning came, the dawn came, and, and Taw'a came to Muslim and says, I'm really sorry of what, 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 what is about to happen essentially, but my son betrayed me. My son betrayed me until Muslim said, look, don't worry, you have done more than enough. Mm. Assalamu alaykum, he says, thank you so much. May Allah jazakillah khair. May, may Allah uh, uh, give blessings towards you. And so this is where he prepares for his final moments. Muslim ibn Aqil, he grabs his sword, his shield, and he goes out to fight. One by one, the enemy is defeated. The enemy is defeated. A hundred people are defeated. Then the, the, the person that was sent who uh, the leader of the army of Ubaidullah was by the name of Muhammad ibn al-Ash'ath. And Muhammad saw that any time anyone would go into combat with Muslim, uh, don't forget this man was the, the, from the, the, the family of Bani Hashim, who were known soldiers. And so one after one after one, he would defeat them and he saw he was losing. And so he told Ubaidullah, send me more people. Send me more people. Ubaidullah said, I sent you an army. He is one man and you can't deal with one man. Allah. I sent you a whole army. That's why Muhammad said, Muhammad al ashath said, this man, I am not dealing with a normal man. I am dealing with a man from Bani Hashim. So they had to change the tactics. They changed the tactics and they dug a hole, a hole behind Muslim. And this is where he fell into the ditch and they were able to subdue him. When they, when they grabbed hold of, of Muslim, they took him to the palace, or as we're saying, the place that they were residing in. Ubaidullah said, I am going to make an example of you. I'm going to make an example, not just of you, but everything that you represent. And so I'm going to kill you. And not only that, and ensure that your body is dragged across the streets of Kufa mm. so that everyone can see if anyone will side with Hussein, this is going to be their end. And so, <clears throat> and so, Muslim was taken to the top of the palace. He was, he said to the man, I have some final requests. Can you grant these to me before you kill me? The man said, yes, what are your requests? He said, they are three. One of them is I would like to pray to rak'at salah. The other one is, please, can I have a sip of water? The third one is I want you to tell Hussein, Send a message to Hussein to tell him not to come to Kufa. For I have been betrayed by the people. Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad has changed things. Don't come to don't come to Kufa because you will meet your fate. And the, the man said, I can't grant you the third the third request, but I can definitely grant you the first two. So Muslim prays to Rak'at Salah, comes back, they give him a cup of water. The cup of water, as the Muslim is trying to drink the cup of water, the blood from his mouth and his face and his wounds mix with the water. So they give him another cup. And the other cup he tries to drink also becomes mixed with the blood of his face and his wounds. And then he turns towards Karbala and says, Assalamu alaykum ya Aba Abdullah. It seems that I am destined to die thirsty, Abba Abdullah. At this moment, it is said that Imam Al Hussein, on his journey to Kufa, suddenly he stops. It's as if he hears the salam from Muslim. He then says, Assalamu alaykum wa alaykum salam. 
Amu ya Muslim. Muslim at that moment, he is killed, he is severed, his body is thrown from the top of the palace all the way to the floor and his body dragged across the streets of Kufa back to the camp of Imam al Hussein. He tells his sister Zainab, Zainab, bring me Hamid. A Muslim had a daughter by the name of Hamid. He also had two sons who were later killed after Karbala, but the daughter she came with his with her with Sayyid Zainab. Hamid, please sit on my lap. Let me wipe your head with my hand. The young innocent girl looks towards Imam Al Hussein. She says, Oh Hussein, I know when you wipe the head of a child, it means they are orphaned. And does that mean my father has been killed? Am I an orphan? Ya Aba Abdullah. Aba Abdullah Al Hussein turns to the child and says, I am your father now. A news approached Karabala that Muslim had been slain and Hamid was approached by our beloved Hussein. Ya Hamid, come close, put your head on my head. She cried and she wept, am I an orphan? She said, Ya Hamid, your father is gone, but you have me, you're not on your own. To all of you I ask, do you know what caused saying as so much pain? The day Ruqayya could only hold the head of Hussein. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. When Imam al Hussein alayhi salam wiped the head of Hamida, what breaks the heart so much about that is that Hamida was so young and so confused and was wondering what exactly this meant. And as Ali said, when this happened, it is almost as if some of the other daughters of Hussein were standing there. And watching was a young girl about the age of four, wondering what's happening. Why is Hamida crying? Why is she crying like she just lost her father? And if only Ruqayya knew what would happen to her in Shah. Decades later, long after the tragedies of Karbala and Shah, Hamida passes away. And when she enters the hereafter, she meets with Ruqayya bint al Hussein, who she hasn't seen in so long. There, Ruqayya sits with Hamida. And Ruqayya's soul starts to ask her, Hamida, after I died, how many of us cried? There are two flowers of Ali. Each one in Ali's love blossomed. Both were too young to understand that their fathers were taken from them. One father found death in Kufa, betrayed though he tried to help them. One father was love upon earth and had his head taken from him. Two men of God, betrayed by men, both died in their thirst with no one beside him. Hamid first asked Rukhaya, Ruqayya, what's the last thing you remember? Because the last time I saw your body, your sweet skin had lost its color. I remember sleeping and then I heard a scream, oh Ruqayya. I heard you cry out to Yazid, what have you done to my father? I heard you weep. And then silence, I have not seen you ever since. Ruqayya replies to her soul, let me first ask you a question. How did you feel when your ears heard Hussein cry, they've killed my cousin? And he saw you there standing confused, saying to my father, what has happened? He took his hand and wiped your head to tell you that you are now an orphan. It's been too long since we last spoke. Let me ask you how your heart broke. 
Hamid says, O oh, Ruqayya, I remember when I heard my father was killed. I asked, how can he be hated so much? Why would someone want his blood spilled? Whenever anyone had a need, by his hands it would be fulfilled. O oh, Ruqayya, both of our fathers were too beautiful for this world. They were both love in flesh and bone. Allah raised them and gave them domes. Oh Hamida Rupaya says, Oh Hamida, I remember that I saw my father in a dream. At first I thought that he had returned, but things were not as they once seemed. Why? Because he had his head attached to his body. Because he had his head attached to his body and no blood from his pure neck streams. I woke up and I cried out his name for my father Hussein. I screamed, I screamed, Father, I can't carry on. Take me with you towards your tomb. This is Ruqayya as she sits with Hamida. Ruqayya's soul starts to ask her, Hamida, after I died, how many of us cried? Oh, Hamida, after I died, how many of us cried? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. We have a narration from the commander of the faithful, the Amir al Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib, sallallahu wa sallam wa alayhi, where he says, May I sacrifice my father and mother for Hussein, who will be killed on the outskirts of Kufa. I swear to Allah, that it is as if I can see the different kinds of wild animals stretching their necks to his grave, crying and weeping over him throughout the night until dawn. And when this happens, beware of neglecting him at his grave. And we ask for that ziyarah of Abu Abdullah for dunya and akhirah. Nuri, I have to say, to come up with the concept of two daughters who become orphaned to mm. meet in heaven and to cover a conversation. I don't know where that came from. Honestly, beautiful, Excellent. beautiful. Right, thank you. Where, uh, I don't even know what my question is, to be honest. Um, so, I mean, subhanAllah, like yesterday, um, because I'm reciting with uh, our good friend Haider Jizani mm -hmm. uh, at the Akbar Foundation, which is happening in London. Um, and every night we're kind of like trying to figure out what to recite about um, because it's not quite a lot for me, uh, but it's mm -hmm. also like a eulogy, so it's got to be like sad as well. Um, and for some reason, like we were thinking about the tragedy of Hamida and how to kind of like, you know, make the people cry as much as possible. And I think connecting it to the tragedy of Raqqaya, which mm -hmm. is one of the most heartbreaking yeah. tragedies that we, we have in, in the story of Karbala, um, was really a must. So I just kind of envisioned that a conversation between the two and that that would happen obviously after uh, mm. she passes on. Uh, and subhanAllah, like, uh, you know, you talk about how you mentioned that it's, it's an amazing idea, but Ali is the second person today to recite this musibah. So even the, uh, the lecturer in the Majlis, Sheikh Shabar, uh, connected the tragedy to, to mm -hmm. Sayyidina Ruqayya. And I think it just goes to show you that, you know, these young girls, they were, you know, every part of Kabbalah breaks your heart, but these young girls, they were just so innocent. You know, they weren't just any girls. Yeah. They were the daughters of Hussein. Yeah. Right? So they were so innocent, so pure. Uh, and they were made to see these things. The extent that Ruqayya had to see the severed head of her father, mm -hmm. you know, just trying to process that sometimes is really, really you hard. You just can't. I don't, I don't yeah. think no matter what age you become, and I think you still see grown men and women in their 80s, 90s still yeah. bawling at that concept. Yeah, for sure. 100%. Um, and even like Fatima al for example, though she didn't see all this bloodshed, just the idea of Hussein leaving and her not understanding yeah. Fatima al you know, that as well also breaks the heart as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you have these really... Um, you know, these really like uh, uh, these stories of innocence that really touch you uh, a lot as well. So, for example, Qasim Ali as well yep. uh, is one uh, that really, really touches me personally. Uh, you know, whenever I, I think and hear about it, Ali Azgar, of course, is one that breaks the heart as well. Um, so, you know. And, and sometimes you, for example, you, you mentioned Qasim Ali Salam, and in, in some narrations, and again, you know, we have to be careful on what, what, what is and what, what's maybe poetically um, described. But there's some narration that say, for example, he was so small for the horse that his feet would drag that you couldn't, or he couldn't read the stirrups and stuff like this. So yeah. to what extent do you play on those kind of... Oh, 100%. I mean, uh, there's one uh, line that I heard from one of the books of the Maktab that I've been writing ever since I heard it, which is that um, after Qasim was killed, 
uh, the person who killed him dragged his body across the ground. Mm. And just that image of an eight-year-old boy being dragged across the ground, you know, in his blood, uh, is something that really, really uh, breaks the heart. I mean, everything in Kabbalah breaks the heart, right? And there's every year we hear the same stories and they still affect us, you know. Um, but I think just that thinking about the idea of how pure these people were yeah. is what yeah. really touches you as well. Yeah, purity in age, purity in soul and everything in between. Thank you. Honestly, thank you so much. And dear viewers, that is the goal of this uh, majlis, as I say, that we, we bring to you um, every night through the Tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to connect you with incredible lines of poetry and verses of love fundamentally. Um, and we hope that inshallah it inspires you to continue your journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala using these lanterns and guides that we have who have shown what absolute conviction in their faith and in their Lord looks like. And with that, we leave you with the final recitation by Mullah Ali Fadl. Following on from the heartbreaking story of Hamida, the poet describes her thoughts and feelings towards her father. Father, time, it moves so slowly I close my eyes and see you Your pure face, it shines so holy Tell me what you've been put through Since you left I feel so lonely Only pain, sadness and fear I wish you were here to show me the way you would wipe my tears. Oh, Father, you were my one guide. Oh, Father, I've nowhere to hide. Oh, Father, come back to my side. Father, time I know it should heal. I try my best not to cry. But this pain, it burns, it's so real. Now you've gone, I've wished I died. Since you've left, I'm numb, I can't feel. I can't take this anymore. All alone, this feels so surreal. I cry and fall to the floor. I cry and fall to the floor. Assalamu alaikum, ya Abu Abdullah. وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليكم مني جميعا سلام الله بدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين خصوصا سيدي ومولاي أبي الفضل العباس واخته زينب جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته إلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات رحم الله من قرأ سورة المباركة الفاتحة مسبوقة بالصلاة على محمد وآل محمد الله صلى على محمد وآل محمد